solo wargaming, or should I say how to solo wargaming? That's the question that we're going to explore in this vlog. But I feel like first in framing it and asking the question, playing a wargame solo, what's the aim of wargaming? Why are we collecting these miniatures, building and painting terrain, sitting down, rolling dice, having some fun? We're looking to create a narrative and whatever system that you enjoy, that's the narrative. There's also a social interaction. Yes, a war game, you need results. We want to win. I do my best to win. Going head to head against an opponent, a friend who can see Tactica differently than me and, and surprise me on the tabletop. So we have that back and forth, the aims of war gaming. But there's also a whole primary and secondary aspect of social interaction. You and I are sitting down at the table rolling dice. We're, we're, we're building something together. We're experiencing something together. After the game, putting away our miniatures, maybe you show me some new models. Maybe we talk tactics. There's that aspect. If you're part of a gaming club or a gaming group, maybe you go to events together or you have hobby build paint nights or just the interaction um, and magnetism of that friendship. So I do view wargaming more than just collecting miniatures, utilizing them and playing with friends. Now, if we step aside to the solo aspect, it is possible to say, look, we're bypassing like, I don't even want to say like 90% of that, 95, 99%. We're just left with our rules, our dice and our toys. Why would we want to focus on that? Well, I look at it from the perspective, there are a couple of times where I was solo wargaming, but they were with a very, very specific point in mind. And the two primary points, some systems are easier than others. Um, Warhammer 40,000, I found it challenging to solo, but I did, linked to various uh, tournament prep that I would play. Battletech, X-Wing miniatures, other systems like that, it's entirely possible. So the first reason to solo a war game, learning the rules, right? Before we can jump into tactics, there's kind of these three layers. And I pushed up to the archive here on my channel, the Wargaming Tactics 101. I explored this in greater detail. So I'm just going to kind of frame it for those of you new to the channel. You want to get good. You want to win games. The first thing you need is to understand the flow of the rules, not memorize the rules, but understand more or less what you can and can't do and when you can and can't do it. Then you layer over the type of army you're playing and the tactics. Then you layer over player personality because you want to win in style. You want to win in the way that you want to win. So all these things that come together to produce a, a tabletop general or a war gamer, it starts with the rules. Now, you can flip through the rules. You can watch YouTube videos. You can listen to Tactica. I, I do that when I'm jumping into new systems. Uh, the most recent system that I learned, although we're about like two years in, I think, or a year and a half, God tier. Put the board out, put the miniatures out, and play both sides. So I'm not trying to win. I'm not trying to lose. I'm trying to make decisions and learn. Okay, it's my turn. Movement. Activate this. Move here. Do that. It's the other player's turn. Activate, move here, do that. Are they in range? What's this happening? What's that happening? So this idea of learning the rules real time. I find that a little bit easier than a book because I'm interacting. I see the tabletop. I'm making use of miniatures. Um, I think of new ideas as I step back for a second and, and kind of look at it. So positioning, learning the rules. That is solo wargaming, but that's, that's just kind of an exercise. Uh, the secondary way is when I want to try out a new system or I want to try out a new lance or, or before I definitely commit to something, utilizing that. What do I mean by that? Well, Battletech, I, I came up with a passable kind of random somewhat AI system rolling on some charts, kind of going back to the old school kind of AD&D &D, generate a dungeon and encounters in the back where based on the light, medium, heavy, or assault mech based on the target or potential target, what's it going to do? And then I, I layered over kind of a pilot personality, you know, reckless, conservative, defensive, attack, defend. And the idea is to create some controlled random and, and just have these mechs run around essentially for target practice. 
only they fire back. The idea here could be utilized to learn the rules, but I, I've used it from time to time when I want to try out a brand new lance, something that I've never done before or, or something that's kind of different. Now, optimally, as part of a gaming group, hey, I could just bring this lance and try it out with my friends. And I often do that, right? I'll bring something new. I'll bring something different. But then there are times where you want to spring a secret. You want to show up with something new, something different, something exciting, and, and have a somewhat vague idea of how it's going to play and, and how it's going to work out. So that level, sometimes you can solo a war game to try things out. But we're still in a very kind of technical area. We're not in this area of social interaction and, and being able to interact with uh, an opponent because we're just not there. I should also say um, X-Wing Miniatures has an excellent AI system. It's very easy to um, AI in the various ships. Uh, that's up on BGG and other places, especially if you continue to play X-Wing 1.0 which I do, that system has been so well refined where it's almost a, a solo wargaming experience. And on a side side note, having multiple ships to play, it's sometimes exciting to, to have a really big battle and have that AI control. So from that perspective, it becomes solo wargaming becomes a kind of storytelling. I wonder what happens. Like if I just set this side loose and I try and go against it, it's not so much winning or losing, but just kind of seeing what could happen. And most of the time you're going to win because a perfect AI as of yet is not going to certainly um, replace a longstanding opponent. So from that perspective, I view solo wargaming as kind of a, a trainer, kind of to see um, what's going on. You know, similar uh, in similar aspects with Warhammer 40,000, some unit combos, some synergy. Sometimes I'd set up some units and kind of rehearse in my mind the things that I need to do to set up an assault or set up my buffs and, and kind of move in. Now, I could go over that in my mind, but by putting the models down on the table and seeing it and reinforcing it, uh, I would do this prepping for tournament play where you have to be on top of, okay, I need this to happen. I need to move here. I need to do this. I need to do that. I'm moving models. You know, in tournament play, if you miss something, if you forget something, that's it. There's no going back. Uh, on a side side note, in tournament play, occasionally I've had an opponent forget to buff a power or do something, and they've asked me, hey, can I do it? I, I let them do it because I assume, look, if you're going to beat me just on that one buff that you missed, and, and some of it's pretty potent in 40K, then that's, that's what it is. I also assume being a good sportsman, good sports player, this idea of, well, your general on the table, your commander was going to probably do it anyway. So you know what? Go ahead. Unless it's like two or three turns later, no. And of course, in a social friendly game, if you forget something, yeah, absolutely go back and move. You know, we see this where if you move into the next phase of the game and you forgot to do something with a unit in the previous phase and now you remember, yeah, okay, go ahead, like move it up. We don't have to get that crazy. But solo war gaming, going through the structure, going through the rules, I'd rather remember than forget. So I see solo AI, solo wargaming as a kind of trainer aspect or a review aspect or a curiosity aspect. Um, unfortunately, I'm sure at some point we'll be there. Well, not unfortunately, unfortunately now, but we will be there at some point, I'm sure, where AI could play. In the meantime, if I can't regularly wargame or get to that aspect of the hobby, well, that, that started my journey in board gaming many, many years ago. It's the only reason I got really into board gaming for the times where I couldn't war game because my work schedule changed for a couple of months. And uh, next thing you know, it's like you know a year later and you've got a ton of board games and you're like, what's going on? But also from the perspective of if I can't regularly war game, I could watch battle reports, work on my miniatures, make some terrain you know, until we're ready to get back into the game. So from your perspective, out of curiosity, out of curiosity, solo wargaming, in what capacity? And, and, and it's never going to replace the head-to-head. -head. And are some systems better suited than others? And what would be those systems? 